Hi, fourth grade. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I hope you listened to the devotional for today, which was titled Hannah and Samuel. Um, now what we have for today is our test. So if you haven't listened to the devotional, now would be the time to stop this video, listen to it, and then get back here. If you already listened to Hannah and Samuel's story, then you can go ahead and continue. All right, so for today, we have our test which um, I already sent to your parents for chapter seven, titled Folk Tales and Traditions. First thing that you're gonna do, if possible, you're gonna write your name, your date, and your number, the date and your number, if possible, like I said. Um, I know some of you worked in the notebook, others in the test, others in computers. So if you can do it, great. Um, what do we have? Well, I'll tell you. First part of the test, well, like you know, the test, and like all my tests, it's very simple. It's one page, front and back. All right? So in the first part, letter A, it's a match. It says, read each definition in column A and match them with the correct concept in column B. So tenemos definiciones, conceptos, los vas a parear. Voy a leer de la 1 a la 9 y las palabras like I would do in the classroom. So letter A, you have companion. Letter B, devoted. Letter C, enlist. Letter D, exotic. Letter E, mascot. Letter F, mending. Letter G, perch. Letter H, scattered. And letter I, tragedy. And the definitions are number one, a disaster or sad event, tragedia. Number two, a small place to sit or rest up high, posición. Number three, animal, person, or thing considered to bring good luck, talisman. Number four, one who spends time with another or others, compañero. Number five, repairing or fixing, arreglando. Number six, separated in all different directions, dispersado. Number seven, to serve, to serve, to sign up, to serve in the military or in some cause, enrolar, en alistarse. Uh, number eight is true or loyal, fiel o devoto. And number nine is very unusual and interesting, exotico or raro. Okay, um, listen, in this part, you can use the book. I didn't write it, I forgot, but in this part, you can use the book because, well, we don't, we didn't write them down because we were not in the class room. So, en esta parte del pareo puedes usar el libro porque como no estuvimos en el salón, pues no las escribimos. Pero siempre me gusta que practiquen el vocabulario. So, en esta parte puedes usar el libro para buscar esta, este vocabulario de la historia que leímos, del cuento tradicional. ¿Ok? Al principio del capítulo. Part B. Alright, so part B says folk tales and traditions. Read the following sentences. Mark the characteristics as F, folktale, F, a fable, or B, both. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to mark, you're going to read all these characteristics. You're going to read all of this. Si es un folktale, you're going to put an F. If it is a fable, va a escribir F, a, si es fábula. Y si es de las dos, una característica que tiene ambos, le ponen B, the both, o ambos. I'll read them. Number one says, a traditional narrative, una narrativa tradicional. Number two, passed down orally, que se pasan oralmente. Number three, they are usually anonymous, usualmente son anónimos. O sea que no sabemos quién es el autor. Um, number four, the characters are animals that have human traits. Número cuatro, los personajes son animales con características humanas. Number five, they teach a moral, a moral or message, a message or moral. Número 5, enseñan un mensaje o una moral. Tienen una enseñanza. Uh, Número 6, these types of stories were created in ancient Greece, the most famous by Aesop. Fueron historias creadas en la antigua Grecia por Esopo. Number 7, examples include the legend of Dog's Rock or the legend of Jacinto's Well. Ejemplos de este tipo son la leyenda del perro eh, roca y la leyenda del pozo de Jacinto. Number eight, it is a short narrative. Es una narrativa corta. And number nine, examples include the song of the coqui or the tortoise and the hare. Ejemplos de este tipo incluyen la canción del coqui o la tortuga y la liebre. 
turn the page, and what do we have? We have parts, part F. Sorry, part C. Don't know where I was looking. Part C. It's homophones. Match the homophones. Vas a parear los homófonos. What do we have? We have peace, C, night, rice, weather, week, flower, and wheel. And on the other side, you have rice, weather, will, flower, peace, week, night, and C. Vas a parear los que suenan iguales. Letter D, main verbs and helping verbs. Verbos principales y verbos de ayuda. Dice, read the following sentences, underline the helping verbs, circle the main verbs. And baja leer las siguientes oraciones. Baja subrayar. ¿Qué subrayar? Una línea por debajo. Una línea por debajo a los verbos de ayuda, helping verbs, verbos auxiliares. Y circle the main verbs. Circula el verbo principal, el verbo de acción o de ser o estar. Number one says, I was walking down the street when I heard a noise. Number two, the noise was coming from a corner. Number three, Enrique will adopt the puppy. Number four, he should name the dog Amigo. Number five, Enrique must feed Amigo. Letter E. Letter E says, future tense, el futuro. No les puedo decir cómo se escribía, pero el futuro se escribe bien fácil. Lo hablamos en la clase. It says, complete the sentences using verbs in parentheses in the future tense. So, si tú te fijas, como mismo lo trabajamos en el salón, tiene unos verbos entre paréntesis en cada oración. Y ese verbo tú lo vas a escribir en esta línea en la forma del futuro. Number one says, she cleaned the house tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Sorry. She cleaned the house tomorrow morning. Harriet study for her English test. Number three, my friend and I sing in the choir. Number four, Paul talked to Thomas about the game. Number five, we eat pizza and ice cream to celebrate. Number six, I call grandma tonight. And number seven, Oliver and Tiffany play the piano at the concert. Okay. Now, part number F. All right, part number F, letter F. Oh, I don't know what's going on. F says, write two sentences using main verbs and helping verbs in the future tense. So, vas a escribir dos oraciones. ¿Con qué? Utilizando verbos principales y verbos eh, de ayuda en el tiempo futuro. Will y should. Okay, vas a escribir una oración con will y otra con should. Este. Ajá. ¿Está bien? Listen, if you have any questions, please let me know. Tell your parents to contact me. I'm here to help. I love you. I miss you. Take care.